I'm Sean Caulfield. I write Clojure for a living using the Atom Editor and the Chlorine plugin and Cognitact's Rebel Data Browser. I've been asked several times what my workflow is like, and so this is a short screencast showing how I work with those tools day to day. I use the Clojure CLI and depths.edn for pretty much every project I work on these days. We're going to start within the next.jdbc project, which is the successor to the Clojure Contrib project Java JDBC. Just show that we use CLI, uh, CLJ with the test runner aliases here to run all of the tests. And then I will start up a REPL, Cognitex REPL, and a socket REPL. The alias gives us complement, which will give us autocomplete, test, which gives us the test dependencies, including the database drivers, REPL-8 will start REPL on a JDK8, and socket will start a socket REPL for us on port 50505. And just to confirm where we've started up, there we go, in the workspace next.jdbc folder. So I'm going to stick this into my Atom editor full screen, so I have them running side by side. I tend to run uh, my editor full screen, so I have no Chrome, no distractions, and I like to have Rebel running side by side so that I can see the results as I'm evaluating them. So we will start up in the next.jdbc test file. We will connect to the REPL running on port 50505. I'm going to shrink that window down. I don't type into the REPL at all. I always evaluate code from the editor, but I do like to see the last couple of lines of output. So we're going to load up that file, and now we're going to run the tests that are in that file. And so we see five tests ran, 205 assertions. And what we can do now is actually drop into some of the code and evaluate pieces. So I'm going to evaluate this execute, which selects everything from the fruit table. And we see it in line, which is nice. It's one of the things I like about chlorine that we're able to drill into the data here. But much more importantly, we get it in Cognitex Rebel as well. And if we drill into this, we see we have uh, a sequence of four result sets, uh, four result rows. And we can also now drop into the code itself. So if I evaluate that to get a var, Rebel is now showing that we have the var there. And in the latest version of Rebel, we now get the ability to drill into vars and navigate through code. So we can see here the name. Interestingly, we can see the things that it uses. So execute uses the protocol execute all, which we can see over here. Yes, it does. Uh, and it uses Corusoch. And that's down here on this line. And we can also see the functions that Rebel knows it is used by. Now the way this works is as you load more code, you're loading more call sites, and Rebel is able to look into those and see where the function calls are. So at this point, we've loaded enough of the next.jdbc library that we can see it's used by the query, the insert multi, and the find by keys functions. So let's drill into find by keys. And one of the really nice things here is that it's able to show you the source of these things. So we can see that find by keys will call itself if you don't have enough arguments, and we'll call execute if you do. And it also calls for query. So we might go, oh, OK, what's for query? And if we drill into that, we see that that is a little string building function to create a select star from. So that's very nice. Rebel gives us great visibility into the structure of systems, allows us to explore. Not very exciting running on a small project like this, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to quit this setup, and we're going to start up uh, a Rebel instance in one of my projects at work. 
build is a little shell script that runs the Clojure CLI across multiple things. We're starting up a socket rebel on port 5000. Uh, we're starting up the Cognitec rebel here. And again, I will just show which directory it got started up in. There we go. We're in one of the World Singles main closure projects. And the other thing I will show is the version of closure we're running on here. And we can see that it's 1.10.1 beta 2. So as before, I'll push this up into the Atom editor in the side here. And I will open up a file in the project that I've been working on recently and load it up. Now this will take a little longer to load. Oh, first of all we will connect to the REPL now on port 5000. Now we will load up the file. This will take a little while. There's quite a lot of code being loaded in here. Here we go. And we will require a couple of things that aren't already in this file, including component, which we use very heavily. And now we're going to start our application system component up. So as I evaluate that, you'll see it appears in Rebel itself. So we're able to drill down and see all of the various subcomponents that our application uses, caches, database, environment, and so on. And now what we can do is execute a query against a much more interesting table. Uh, this is essentially just random test data in a user table. Um, but what it allows us to do is to look at the, uh, the various keys here, and we'll see we have user affiliate ID, and that looks like it might be a foreign key into an affiliate table. So let's drill down into that, and immediately we get the contents of the affiliate record for that. Uh, let's log, go down here and look at, for example, status ID. And we'll see that that is a foreign key into uh, a table called status with a name of approved. And site ID drills down into a table here and gives us a lot more information. So now we can actually walk through our database. We can drill from table to table all because Datafy and Nav are supported by Next.jdbc and by the Datafy namespace in Clojure Java JDBC. But at this point, we've executed quite a bit of code, so now let's go and have a look at some more of the system we've got in hand. So I'm going to jump to the definition for this. This is where we build our main component with all our subcomponents. Uh, and again, if we now drill into this in Rebel, we're able to see all of the subcomponents it uses. So if we drill into, say, the environment subsystem, we can drop down and look at the source code for that. So it just creates uh, a map, and we can see where it's used in application system, and so on. So we can actually navigate through our entire code base here. Uh, if I was to pull up all of the namespaces, for example, uh, and now we can drop down into a huge number of things. And we can look at the methods, we can look at the publics, and we can even go and look at the source code of some of these things in here. So there you go. That's Rebel. That's my workflow with a socket Rebel, Chlorine, and Cognitex Rebel Browser. Thank you very much for watching.